Hello, everyone. Good afternoon and welcome. We'll get started shortly, but before we get started, I want to let you know that uh, we will be offering um, uh, closed captions or um, subtitles to this presentation today in Spanish. So if you want to go ahead and get that going before we get started, you can do so by going to the closed caption function that's at the bottom of your screen and you can select show, show subtitles or if you want to see the entire um, translation as we go you can see uh, you can say show full translation and you can uh, activate that right now and you will have access to that through the entire presentation also if you're interested in getting the presentation in spanish so you can follow along you can go to our industry portal puertoricodmo.com and you can get uh, the presentation in Spanish there, so you can follow along with us. We'll get started shortly. Gracias a todos los que nos acompañan hoy. Si desean eh, utilizar nuestro servicio de subtítulos, que van a hacer en español, pueden activar esta función en la parte baja de su pantalla, donde eh, dice Closed Captions. Ahí usted puede seleccionar Eh, ver subtítulos o ver el tracto completo de la traducción. Así que durante toda la presentación, entonces usted puede tener acceso a la traducción en español. También, si desea eh, obtener nuestra presentación del día de hoy en español, puede ir a nuestro portal de la industria, puertorricodmo.com, y ahí puede tener acceso a la presentación en español para que pueda eh, seguirnos durante la presentación el día de hoy. Ya estamos prontos a comenzar en un par de minutos, así que enseguida estamos con ustedes. Hello, everybody, and welcome. Thank you for uh, joining us today. We are about to get started in a few moments. But before we get started, I wanted to share with you that we will be having our um, closed captions activated. So there will be uh, subtitles in Spanish throughout the presentation. If you want to do that, you can please go to the bottom of your screen and go where it says closed captions, and you can activate the function there as well as uh, we have the presentation in English. So if you want to follow along, you can go to our industry portal, puertoricodmo.com, and you can get the presentation there. 
Hola a todos y buenas tardes. Vamos a estar comenzando en breves minutos, pero antes de comenzar, les queríamos dejar saber que vamos a ofrecer eh, subtítulos en español durante toda la presentación. Así que si ustedes quieren hacer eh, esto y pueden activar esta función, la parte baja de pantalla, donde dice Close Captions. Ahí usted puede activar la función de subtítulos en español y puede escuchar toda la presentación con estos subtítulos. También desea tener un website disponibles en español en nuestro portal de la industria, puertorricotien.com. Usted puede ir ahí y puede eh, descargar la presentación de nuestro portal de la industria. Vamos a comenzar en breves minutos. Welcome everyone. My name is Xiomara Rodriguez and I'm the Communications Director for Cover Puerto Rico. Thanks for taking time out of your schedule to join uh, during our May industry update. Today, our executive leadership team will share information about the research, marketing, and sales strategies we have developed in response to the current COVID-19 pandemic. Before we get started, I want to go over a few housekeeping items. As you can see on your screen, today's industry update will be translated simultaneously into Spanish presentation are available in Spanish on our industry portal, puertorricodmo.com. You can download the slides from there and follow along. La presentación del día de hoy tendrá subtítulos o closed captions en español. Si usted desea activar la función de subtítulos en español, Oprima el botón etiquetado Closed Captions en la parte de abajo de su pantalla. Elija la opción que dice Show Subtitles para ver los subtítulos en español. Si usted desea ver el tracto completo de la traducción, mientras vamos avanzando en esta presentación, usted puede seleccionar la función que dice View Full Transcript. La presentación que utilizaremos el día de hoy está disponible en español y puede ser descargada desde nuestro portal de la industria, puertorricodmo.com. We will have time to answer questions at the end, but you can send your questions throughout the presentation by using the Q&A feature, which is the bubble labeled Q&A at the bottom of your screen. On today's industry update, we will discuss great information, share insightful research, and go over the destinations recovery plan. You'll hear from our CEO, Brad Dean, Research and Analyst Director, Alicia Valentine, Chief Marketing Officer, Leah Chandler, and Chief Sales Officer, Ed Carey, and Leisure Sales Director, Francisco Blanche. Now, to get things started, I'll leave you with Discover Puerto Rico CEO, Mr. Brad Dean. Saludos a todos, and greetings from your DMO, Discover Puerto Rico. First and foremost, I hope you your loved ones and your employees are safe and healthy. The COVID global pandemic is a serious matter. And of course, protecting the health and safety of our residents and visitors is the top priority for all of us. We want to begin by expressing our appreciation for the heroes on the front lines who are fighting this battle. Lately, we've all been reminded that not all heroes wear capes. Today, our heroes are doctors, nurses, healthcare workers, grocery store employees, pharmacy staff, public agency employees, and others who day in, day out, 
are on the front lines, protecting us and serving each of us. And to them, we say gracias. The truth is, we're fighting two battles today. One is the battle of public health, but there's a second battle that we must win, and that is the financial disaster that we face along with the United States and most of the rest of the world. And no one understands that better than you, as our industry has been the hardest hit. I genuinely empathize with each of you who have invested your time, your talents, and in many cases, your personal resources to build successful businesses. It's painful and frustrating to dismantle an organization that you've worked so hard to build. And knowing that tourism accounts for 80,000 jobs throughout our island, all of this makes the efforts to lead a recovery in tourism extremely important. At Discover Puerto Rico, each day we remind ourselves that you are key to Puerto Rico's economic success and the future of our island. And our purpose is to help you succeed. And that doesn't change even during a global pandemic. In fact, that's precisely why we must work together with our partners in government to attack the economic crisis we face with the same commitment and determination and teamwork that we are using to attack the health crisis. There's plenty of bad news to go around today. You see it and hear it just like we do. So let me begin by sharing a little bit of encouragement. While we know that tourism has stopped temporarily, and we don't know exactly when it will be safe for people to resume traveling to Puerto Rico, we do know, based on several credible industry researchers, these facts. People want to travel when this is over, and many are already planning to travel during the next six months. Last week, we shared a lot of relevant research in our industry webinar, which you can access on our industry portal, PuertoRicoDMO.com, and you'll hear more research findings today. We also know that travel post-COVID will change, and that will bring both challenges and opportunities. But while some of these changes might not be ideal for us, like people preferring to avoid cruise ships or airlines, there are other opportunities that are perfect for Puerto Rico. For example, many people say they will seek beaches, mountains, open spaces, and small towns. Some say they will stay closer to home, whereas others say they will cancel their international vacations, looking for a unique cultural experience, but not leaving the United States. And we also know this, that while COVID is unique and cannot be compared to other crises, the one certain way to limit economic damage during a crisis is to shorten the recovery cycle. The sooner we can get our tourism engine restarted, the sooner your business, your team, and your job get back to normal. And that's why our team at Discover Puerto Rico began working on our COVID recovery plan the very day our governor announced the first restrictions. We used our crisis management plan and began building a COVID recovery action plan to enable us to bring tourism back as quickly as possible. You can see the details on our COVID action plan on our industry portal website, PuertoRicoDMO.com. And you'll hear and see a lot of the details from that plan today during this webinar. And while none of us can predict exactly what lies ahead, I do want to offer you a few assurances. You can count on your DMO, Discover Puerto Rico, to do everything we can to lead another economic recovery. Here's what you can expect from us. We will leverage the competitive advantages of our destination related to post-COVID travel. We will leverage the value proposition of our destination. We will seize opportunities with changing consumer behavior, niche market opportunities, and highly resilient segments to deliver early results. We will seek win-win synergy by aligning with key trade partners who are also in need, just like we are. We will customize marketing sales plans to meet airlines' immediate needs. We will place a heavy emphasis on those tactics which have high conversions and quick returns. We will incentivize short-term bookings by travel advisors, wholesalers, and meeting planners. But we will embrace new realities in meetings and convention sales and promotions. We will do everything we can to elevate Puerto Rico's status on the national and global stage as a leader in recovery and resiliency. 
And one more thing you can always expect from your DMO, Discover Puerto Rico. Every decision we make, every strategy we pursue is backed by solid data and credible research. In these times of uncertainty, everyone is guessing what will happen or wondering what will happen. By basing our actions on facts and data, we can be certain of our future success. And you can also count on our team to continue to keep you updated with accurate, timely information, including research, resources, training, and our marketing and sales plans so that you can plan accordingly. We will continue to work with our partners, both on and off island, to ensure that not only does Puerto Rico not get left behind, but we do everything we can to position our island to lead the tourism recovery in the United States. In addition to working with our local partners like PRHTA, PRTC, DDEC, the Foundation for Puerto Rico, and the local chambers of commerce, Discover Puerto Rico is active in the Governor's Economic Recovery Task Force. Off island, Discover Puerto Rico is working with the U.S. Travel Association and the United States Travel and Tourism Advisory Board to address matters necessary for recovery. We are working with industry-leading research partners like Longwoods, Tourism Economics, Destination Analysts, Adara, and Skiff to provide information and receive their research and updates. We're working closely with important groups like the American Society of Travel Advisors, Meeting Planners International, the Professional Convention Managers Association and Destinations International to make certain Puerto Rico is not left out of important events and activities. Economic recovery is an all hands on deck team effort and we are working to make sure Puerto Rico has a seat at the table and our industry is not forgotten. And on that note, I was encouraged to hear the timely comments by Governor Vasquez last night, signaling the reopening of our economy and the necessary collaboration surrounding the reopening of our tourism industry. This is an important first step in the long journey we must take together. And of course, that requires a high degree of collaboration amongst all of us. The public and private sector working together, industry and public health working together, buyers and suppliers working together, employers and employees working together, and of course, you and your DMO working together. Thankfully, we are not alone. What the governor described last night is similar to what each of the 50 states in the U.S. must also do, a gradual return of business and commerce that is handled in phases, allowing us to protect public health while getting people back to work. You and I both know that the economy does not turn on immediately like a light switch. It's more like the volume dial on your radio. You can turn it up or you can turn it down. You can continually adjust it to the moment, considering what's happening around you. And that's what we must begin to do as we implement our tourism recovery action plan and get your business back to where it needs. And if we manage this right, we can have healthy people and a healthy economy. And that must be our collective goal. You can expect that we will be focused on accelerating recovery and inviting visitors back as soon as it's safe for them to travel here. However, there are many factors we must take into consideration to determine just the right time to do this. And while we have built a solid recovery plan, we cannot make decisions in a vacuum. So we have established a complex decision matrix based upon many factors to consider as we shape our plans and make our decisions. These include government guidelines and policies, the readiness of local businesses and travel suppliers, the economic realities we face, both locally, but also in the U.S. and beyond, and of course, the major factors affecting consumers, some of which are attitudinal and emotional, some of which are behavioral, and some of which are economic. You can also expect that despite this difficult situation we are all in, Discover Puerto Rico has not and will not stop promoting Puerto Rico. While this is not a time for traditional paid advertising or customary sales activities, we will continue to keep Puerto Rico top of mind with our future visitors. Of course, this is not a time to travel to Puerto Rico, but that doesn't mean we have to stop talking about Puerto Rico. For those who are dreaming of their next vacation, we want them to be dreaming about Puerto Rico. For those who are planning a future meeting or convention, we want them to be planning to come to our island. 
And for those who are tired of sitting indoors and working from home, we hope to provide them a temporary escape, reminding them of beautiful beaches, warm sunsets, lush mountain landscapes, not to mention rich, vibrant culture and great food and coffee. Just because people have stopped purchasing travel doesn't mean we have to stop inspiring them to come here in the future. We just have to do this in a classy, sophisticated manner that is respectful and appropriate for the time. And finally, you can count on us to continue to be innovative, adaptable, and responsive. Every crisis brings unwanted problems, unanticipated challenges, but also unprecedented opportunities. And we will be looking for every single opportunity to position Puerto Rico for an accelerated recovery. But we realize this pandemic has created a major health crisis followed by a major economic crisis. And while we cannot control the rate of infection or the spread of COVID ourselves, we are prepared to do everything we can to get your business back up and running full speed as quickly as possible. For us, recovery doesn't end until airplanes are full, our beaches are active, hotels have high occupancy rates, restaurants have a waiting list, and attractions are busy. And I'm confident that just like in past crises, we are going to climb out of this together. And Discover Puerto Rico is committed to doing all we can to help you in that regard. And now we're pleased to share with you the details of what we're doing and what we're planning to lead this recovery. And knowing that everything that we do begins with research, data, and analysis, I'm pleased to turn this presentation over to our Director of Research and Analytics, Alicia Valentine. Thank you, Brad. As you've probably seen over the last two months, there is certainly no shortage of data during this time. From the number of cases of the virus to projections of the impact on the industry, there has been a plethora of data. Much of the data that is being shared through webinars, news outlets, and publicly available reports look at what is happening worldwide or in the US. However, I want to share with you what we know about what is happening in Puerto Rico. If you attended the research webinar last week, some of this material will be familiar to you, but I wanted to highlight the key points that I shared. Except for the two weeks following January's earthquakes, Puerto Rico was seeing higher hotel demand in 2020 than the prior year, but the WHO's classification of coronavirus as a pandemic the week of March 8th, followed by the government's stay-at-home order, took occupancy into the single digits, and we've been there for the past six weeks. In the 16 months following Hurricane Maria, the island lost approximately 700,000 hotel room nights. However, more visitor nights were lost as many of the rooms that were filled post Maria, we know were relief and recovery workers. Adam Sachs of Tourism Economics told us last week that the impact of COVID-19 is expected to be nine times worse than 9-11. However, when we compare the anticipated losses to Maria, it is expected to be nearly three times as worse in the coming 16 months with an anticipated 1.9 million room nights lost as a result of COVID-19. The efforts of the marketing team will work to mitigate those losses that are expected worldwide, but it helps to have this perspective. So what does the forecast look like? Of course, it depends on when governments of Puerto Rico lift the state home orders, but it also depends on what is happening in consumers' home communities. The research shows us that consumers will likely stay closer to home in the months immediately following when bans are lifted. So the local market will be important throughout summer. This table shows us year over year occupancy changes as of April 19th. So the comparison is for future hotel bookings as of that date, this year versus a year ago. You'll see we break out not only the overall change, but also how the leisure and group market is impacted. September and October have seen some gains. You'll see much of that is in the group market. Not only is this attributable to bookings from the Discover Puerto Rico sales effort in 2019, but also in groups scheduled to have been on the island in March and April, moving to those months. Of course, September and October typically have the lowest occupancy on the island, given it's hurricane season. 
However, with the relaxing of cancellation policies, consumers are making plans for when they think it will be safe to travel, knowing there is flexibility in being able to cancel. Consumers do anticipate changing their travel behavior once communities begin to reopen. In addition to taking more regional trips in the short term, there are expected to be more lasting impacts. Discover Puerto Rico partners with the tourism focused research firm Destination Analysts for weekly updates on consumer perceptions of the current situation. As part of this week's reporting, consumers indicated what travel activities they anticipate being impacted for at least six months once communities begin to reopen. For Puerto Rico, this list is a bit of a mixed bag. Certainly having cruises top the list of activities to avoid is concerning for an important component of the industry. But we're not a crowded destination. We haven't been hit as hard as other places with the virus, and we're not a foreign destination. But we do require air travel. A third of travelers anticipate avoiding airplanes for six months. There are significant differences in how different demographics feel about these activities. Discover Puerto Rico can segment this data, understanding which consumers are more willing to get on a plane as we start to look for target audiences for marketing. Again, this is changes in behavior for six months following the opening of communities. While that varies across target markets, this puts us in Q3 and Q4 for when we expect to see visitors come back. We're getting some initial confirmation on the September and October timeframe being when mainland visitors are going to be willing to visit the island by monitoring what is happening with airline seat capacity. Overall, there has been a decline of 13% in seats throughout the end of the year. However, the reduction in capacity is only through August. Airlines are drinking through a fire hose right now, attempting to make changes to routes based on anticipated demand. With this, they've focused primarily on route changes through June. Though airlines have pulled out about a million seats from the market, they've added capacity for September through December, a strong signal in the return of leisure visitors in the third and fourth quarters. And the Puerto Rico product is what consumers are looking for. The research is showing relaxing on a beach or in remote spaces that connect with nature is how consumers want to ease back into travel. So though the culture of the island is the backbone of the Discover Puerto Rico brand, we will be following the lead of consumers, providing the kinds of images and messages they find motivating now. We will continue to monitor consumer sentiment to understand not only messaging, but also audience and timing. The research that Discover Puerto Rico is leaning on allows us to segment consumers by demographic and geographic differences. With this, we can understand which audiences are receptive to Puerto Rico and when we can anticipate welcoming visitors again. Discover Puerto Rico has been sending weekly emails to the industry detailing the latest research. If you aren't receiving those, please sign up at PuertoRicoDMO.com. Next, I'd like to introduce Chief Marketing Officer Leah Chandler, who will detail how Discover Puerto Rico is putting the research into action with the development of marketing to lead us into recovery. Thank you, Alicia. As we've shared in earlier presentations, the DMO is actively working against a crisis plan built specifically to address issues related to COVID-19. As a reminder, this plan is available in English and Spanish on our industry portal, PuertoRicoDMO.com. Today, we remain in phase two of this plan, the regroup phase. Before we'll enter into phase three, we're gonna look for key benchmarks, benchmarks like a decline in the number of new COVID cases on the island, travel restrictions into and on the island are lifted or reduced. And of course, we need to see a critical mass of tourism related businesses open in order to accommodate those tourists. And while we manage the COVID crisis, we must also be cognizant of the upcoming hurricane season rapidly approaching. This year's hurricane season will bring new challenges in conjunction with COVID-19 and we must be prepared. In fact, we are already receiving inquiries from journalists on this topic. 
We're working with Ketchum, our public relations agency of record to message around how the current implications from COVID-19 will impact the island should we enter an active hurricane scenario. This includes updating our crisis playbook and activating crisis drills that account for these new realities. As Brad mentioned, no single decision is being made in a vacuum. The DMO has developed a decision funnel that assists in guiding each step we take in managing the current crisis and best preparing ourselves for a post-COVID future. This document is also available on our industry portal for further review. We know consumers are bored at home. Um, this show, uh, the, what you see here is a slide that shows a recent Google stat indicating the number of YouTube searches for travel related content. It's up by 52%. Many of these people, they aren't ready to book today, but they do want to learn more. We know that they're still dreaming. Another Google stat shows that one way consumers are trying to combat that boredom at home is through participating in virtual tours. In fact, YouTube searches for virtual tours have increased 122% since just January. As we shared with you in the last industry update, Discover Puerto Rico was the first destination to launch virtual experiences in response to the COVID crisis. Since we began, we have launched a series of 13 activations from salsa lessons and cocktail demonstrations to yoga classes and boozy brunches. We have connected with thousands of potential visitors, bringing Puerto Rico directly into their homes, garnering 451.5 million impressions and more than $6 million in earned ad value. Driving earned media coverage is, of course, a primary focus for the DMO in order to keep Puerto Rico in consumers' consideration sets for future travel. We continue to seek opportunities to be the first, best, and only in this category, emerging ahead of other destinations in delivering engaging, relevant, and thoughtful experiences and activations while also positioning Puerto Rico as a leader in crisis management. Another first for the destination, Discover Puerto Rico is the first DMO to launch live guided tours of popular points of interest across the island. In tandem with our web and digital partners at Miles, along with Ketchum and of course our internal team, we've partnered with Patria Tours to execute three live guided tours as part of National Tour and Travel Week. This first of its kind experience produced using Google Earth is going to bring our destination to life while allowing users to interact with our guides in real time and ask questions and be able to respond. Following the launch of these tours, we're also going to activate a digital postcard campaign to key media letting them know we can't wait to host them soon. In addition to these tentpole activations, we continue leveraging other newsworthy hooks in order to keep Puerto Rico in the news. Some of these include our recent All in Good Time campaign, our long form sight and sound videos for relaxation featuring the ambiance of the island, additional play for our coffee culture, including a mailing of authentic Puerto Rican coffee directly to the media, and ongoing thought leadership opportunities to position Puerto Rico as an industry leader. On this next slide, you're going to see just a sample of key media coverage from some of these efforts in recent weeks. You can check out our industry portal and our industry social channels for weekly updates um, on earned media. A quick note on golf, we know that when visitors arrive on the island again, they're going to be craving connections with nature and the great outdoors. Working in partnership with Dan Shepard Public Relations, we are keeping an active pipeline of earned media and outreach featuring the island's golf product. Here you can see a sample of those recent hits, totaling more than $42,000 in earned media value from March and April. Many of you know we've recently worked with MPI to replace planned media with the list of opportunities you see here putting Puerto Rico front and center in the meetings industry. The MPI podcast, Leadership During Crisis, was featured on the MPI website and pushed out in their newsletter. 
On May 8th, Brad will be on a panel with a representative from Hilton Corporate and a meeting planner discussing lessons learned from a crisis. April 14th was Global Meetings Industry Day and Puerto Rico owned the day as a marquee sponsor of this 18 session, 12 hour webinar that had more than 15,000 participants. Brad interjected multiple remarks on behalf of Puerto Rico and four custom videos were shown during the production along with logo presence throughout. Many of you know ASAE and PCMA are two additional key partners. In lieu of traditional media investments with these organizations, we continue to seek opportunities to meet them in the space they are today. And on May 15th, Brad will join Susan Robertson, the president and CEO of ASAE and other panelists for a webinar titled, Leading Through a Crisis, Reaching Association Executives. We've partnered with PCMA additionally for a four week virtual yoga activation for meeting planners, offering a virtual yoga experience in the destination that will be pushed out to their database of 7,000 members. Additionally, we've developed a plan to replace engagement at canceled or postponed trade shows or events. We pulled a list of attendees from last year's shows to create this engagement list. This six month program is going to allow us to stay top of mind with key clients. For instance, this summer, we're going to feature an iced coffee care package featuring 100% Puerto Rican coffee. Now we'll talk quickly about our creative messaging during this unique time. Here's a brief recap of the objectives I've recently shared that were developed to specifically address the unique challenges of marketing during a crisis. As a reminder, this campaign was developed in partnership with our creative agency, r and Partners, but it was produced 100% in-house by our internal multimedia team at absolutely no cost. Today, we're still executing against phase one. In phase two, as travel restrictions are lifted, it's important we lean into more concrete calls to action touting tangible incentives to travel to the island, including the critical need to finalize the health and cleanliness standards. And then in phase three, we'll focus on lower funnel tactics, such as packaging. If you haven't seen our most recent phase one, all in good time videos, please be sure to check those out on our YouTube channel. Here are just a few examples of recent Facebook posts tied to All in Good Time. And then you're also going to see some recent campaign focused Instagram posts. So phase two, let's talk about what comes next. As the world prepares to open again, this is the time to build confidence about traveling to Puerto Rico and giving those people who have been daydreaming about their next vacation the permission to go, to try new food, to feel warm sand between their toes, to dance, to enjoy sunsets with people who they love. This phase is about excitement, it's about confidence, and it's about empowerment. We're no longer just inspiring. We're giving people permission to act on those desires supported with proof points like ease of access and no passport, as well as delivering on a new standard of safety in travel. So what does that approach look like? It's going to be two prong. Our approach is rooted in inspiration and confidence. We need to instill both in separate but connected executions. Inspiration is about the what, it's the beauty of our island, it's the blue skies, it's our amazing beaches, unique experiences they can only find in Puerto Rico. Confidence is about the why, giving travelers permission to feel good about the decision they're making and telling them that we're going to help keep them safe and healthy. When you watch these spots, you should feel optimistic, you should feel hopeful, you should feel you have the room to breathe and room to relax. The visuals should make the viewer feel excited that it's finally time to travel to paradise again. We'll use the It's Time titles and build music and energy throughout while remaining true to our approach from phase one. 
Here's an example of what a spot may look like. Uh, the copy may read, it's time. For simple pleasures, for dramatic backdrops, it's time for deep breaths, for deeper dives. It's time for endless walks, for reconnecting. It's time for paradise. It's time to discover Puerto Rico. Someone who does voiceovers for a living is going to make it sound much better than that. But you hopefully get the idea. Um, the second version has a more direct call to action and it may look like this. It's time for simple pleasures and incredible strolls. It's time to soak up endless golden rays and sink into turquoise wonders. It's time for warm welcomes and ice cold bliss. It's time for paradise. It's time to book your trip, discover Puerto Rico. Rebuilding this confidence is so critical to generating demand, but it's only half of our equation. Even the most confident traveler is going to have some hesitation when considering if the time is right to finally take a vacation. And the language in this next direction is all about Puerto Rico answering that question with an unequivocal yes. We'll stick with our simple, beautiful, wide open beaches and landscapes as the backdrop. The music will start slowly and then build as we move past that initial statement. And that, that spot may look like this. It's time to be honest. Travel has changed forever, but one thing will never change. There's no paradise like Puerto Rico. It's time for new worlds with no need for passports. It's time to take a trip where everyone takes care of you. It's time for a promise. Each time you visit will keep you safe, happy and healthy. It's time to feel comfortable about feeling free. Discover Puerto Rico. You'll notice in this execution, we use a special URL, discoverpuertorico.com backslash promise. That could change. But the idea here is that once our official government cleanliness certification program is finalized and public, we will add these to our website and encourage visitors to read and understand how Puerto Rico and its tourism businesses and stakeholders are working together to deliver a comprehensive, best-in-class cleanliness standards to enhance their visit and keep them safe. These concepts will be finalized in the coming weeks as we look to move into phase two of our plan, hopefully very soon. Earlier in the presentation, we mentioned the sounds of Puerto Rico. If you haven't checked those out, be sure to, um, to give those a look and listen on our YouTube channel. We also recently launched a buy with WeTransfer in which Puerto Rico is prominently featured in this popular file sharing platform. This is just another key example of how we're meeting consumers where they are, which is working remotely. A fun concept that actually rolled out today, we've worked on uh, locally and internally involves stop motion. Our internal team played a really key role here um, in this production using household items to recreate iconic locations in Puerto Rico. We're going to be um, launching this series as kind of a bridge between phases one and two, and we'll use this as a unique earned media hook as well. In our last industry update, we discussed our online training series for local partners and stakeholders. The series, which has all been recorded in Spanish, features eight to 10 videos, roughly 10 minutes long, featuring a variety of timely topics, which you see listed here. The first video focused on maximizing partnerships was launched earlier this week and can be found on our industry portal and all of our industry social channels. We're gonna review just a couple of quick market segments. Um, while our international consumer marketing efforts have been paused, we have continued earned media efforts to keep Puerto Rico in the news in key international markets. March generated nearly $200,000 in earned media ad value with 346 million impressions. Highlights of our international coverage are included here, featuring pieces that are touting um, activations like our virtual vacations. This sparked a really significant amount of coverage overseas. Sales calls and educational sessions have been the focus of our sales efforts in recent weeks in each of our international markets. 
Our partnership with Brand USA was being used as an efficient vehicle to keep lines of communication open between Puerto Rico and overseas buyers. It's important here to note, and will I'm sure uh, come as no surprise, that we are significantly reducing and in most cases eliminating our international efforts moving forward. With limited financial resources and severely reduced air capacity, marketing to our international markets unfortunately just cannot be maintained at current levels. In the cruise segment, we've worked with our cruise industry marketing consultants to stay abreast of recent developments in this important market segment. Officially, the cruise lines have published target dates for return to service in June and July of 2020. We know that will likely change. We hear predictions that many of the lines will return to what is called homeland cruising. This was a phenomenon that happened post 9-11. Americans, who of course are the bulk of cruise passengers, they wanted to stay closer to home, but they still wanted to cruise. They flew less, and when they did, it was to embark in vessels within the U.S. Most ships were repositioned to U.S. ports, including San Juan. This could be good news for us in, in rebuilding Puerto Rico in the cruise business. It's likely that a lot of those ships, um, the actual hardware may be reduced by taking older ships out of service and capacity on board the vessels will also be reduced with likely 40 to 50% occupancy rates to begin. Like many other tourism business, resumption of operations will be slow and phased and the implementation of new health and safety protocols will of course be the highest priority. Once established and approved, the cruise lines will begin coordinating and communicating with all the destinations and terminal operators, the tour operators, the ground handlers. Um, we know the global outlook is that cruising will not begin until mid to late summer or early fall 2020 on a limited basis, but the Caribbean does stand to benefit in the short term. Moving on to a very brief media update. Our timeline has been updated only slightly to account for relaunching our paid so, uh, social promotion on April 9th, which you see reflected here. Looking forward, our media strategy really remains focused on three phases, and as we've previously noted, will be largely dependent on the level of funds made available to the DMO for paid marketing and media. As with the earned media and creative, today we remain focused in phase one of our consumer strategy. Here we're just reiterating our market approach, although we know this is going to change as air access and consumer sentiment in our key markets evolve. One item to note is the removal of New York from our current social media targeting for obvious reasons. And finally, all of the great content we've been sharing in the past weeks from virtual vacations to recipes and playlists now live on a brand new landing page on our website. Be sure to check that out at discoverpuertorico.com backslash virtual vacay. And of course, we look forward to updating you on marketing plans and our strategies as they evolve. At this time, I'm going to turn things over to Ed Carey, our Chief Sales Officer, for additional news and updates. Thank you, Leah, and good afternoon, everyone. I hope that you and your families are staying safe and healthy. Uh, before we dig into some of the feedback we're hearing from meeting planners during this crisis, I wanted to share some quick facts on our current position for 2020 and beyond just to illustrate the extremely positive impact our hotel community has had in the meetings marketplace over the past year. Despite the lockdown, we are actually up in room nights booked for future years by 5% in 20, uh, April 2020 versus the same time last year. And this is not rescheduled meetings, these are new events. Year to date, we have crossed the milestone of 100,000 rooms for future years and are up by 44% over the previous year. And we are in a solid position for 2021. Uh, our pipeline of tentative business is more than double where it was last year. And 2022 is up by 56%. You know, it may be a surprise to some of us that a recent North Star meetings poll indicated that 
83% of meeting planners are still working full time. And although there's no doubt that the lead, you can see the lead volume is substantially down year over year, we're still seeing activity and have actually produced 40 new leads for over 23,000 room nights or close to 20 million in economic impact since the lockdown began. So the overarching point is that we must remain engaged now more than ever to keep this momentum going. So during the last update, we discussed that we would be meeting with our customer advisory board to help guide us on this path to recovery. And we, we covered many important topics and planning to continue to use them as a resource. Uh, a few of the key findings are listed here. Firstly, uh, as the entire world is in this together, those suppliers that show flexibility, empathy, and trust when dealing with canceling, rescheduling, or booking new business will be those that develop long-lasting relationships. The fact that we are a U.S. territory will play a, a really important role in our major markets, especially as it relates to safety and security. And as a destination, and, and, and many of us have said this, we must be able to articulate a unified and comprehensive plan to address safety and security, especially as it applies to sanitation protocols. And, and obviously, uh, timing is critical. It, it is certainly clear that the structure of meetings will change and become more complex. So it will become extremely important for our service teams to be well equipped to answer the many new questions that will be coming from meeting planners. You know, some believe, for example, that, that buffets will go away altogether for a period of time or be reimagined in creative ways. Uh, many meetings will take on a hybrid form which entails a mix of live interaction for those that do choose to travel, but offer alternatives for those that won't by video conferencing certain portions of their meetings. And planners will be looking to CVVs and DMOs as a key source for expert advice and updates on how the destination is handling important issues like sanitation and cleanliness, across all of the sectors that contribute to the meeting's experience. And we've also completed a significant survey through Meeting Planners International to take an even deeper dive into the current thought process and future behavior of the meeting planner. When we asked them about future events that were either on the books or being scheduled, over 80% believe that they will hold meetings before the end of this year. However, the vast majority, or over 88% of planners, believe that a, fully, a full recovery will not occur in meetings until you know, Q1 of, of 2021 and, and beyond. And once again, this is important, when planners were asked what issues would be extremely important when looking to book events, at least in the short term, they will be looking very carefully at the issues surrounding health and safety. So all of this leads to what we believe is most important to all of us listening here today. When asked how much more or less likely they would be to book a destination that acted rapidly to the crisis, 74% said they would be more or much more likely to book those that acted quickly to contain the virus. And as we know, Puerto Rico did just that. So we believe that maintaining this momentum by clearly outlining a comprehensive destination approach to our health and safety protocols quickly will prove to be a key factor in our recovery. In the meantime, we have continued to aggressively educate the leisure travel advisors and are monitoring demand daily. All indications are that corporate individual and, and leisure sales will be the first to begin to recover. Uh, we've been engaging in the travel trade on many levels and monitoring booking activity daily. So to fill you in a bit more on what we're doing to engage the travel trade, I'm going to turn it over now to our director of leisure sales, Francisco Blanche. Thank you, Ed, and good afternoon, everyone. As we continue to monitor demand fluctuation in global distribution channels, we notice that as restrictions are extended, 
Bookings get postponed to future months, reflecting demand decrease now through June, but showing um, growth into the rest of the year. Summer months show the most growth as family travel thrives in this season, and October marks the return of corporate bookings. November fluctuates more, historically expected, since it's an election month. However, we see December stay flat to positive facing the holiday season. We continue fostering awareness through our key partner accounts by virtual means, conducting our sales activities through webinars with great success in attendance, promoting education to the travel agent community, as we believe travel advisors will play a key role in the reactivation process as travelers will need more information and direction on where to go, what to book, and when. To entice travel advisors, we have placed since March 20th a gift card incentive valued at $50 for each agent that completes the general course. This way we impart knowledge to the travel agent community and deliver expertise on how to best sell Puerto Rico. We have scheduled sales activities with several key accounts well into July, staying in touch with our key partners, rescheduling events, sales calls and trade shows into August and through December and following up with the travel agent community. This incentive has been promoted through IATA and Travel Pulse. At the close of the incentive campaign, we have so far enrolled 286 and graduated 194 agents through April 20th. That represents a 95% increase over the same time last year. As restrictions are lifted, we will see our efforts and strategy pay off. Since implementation, we have seen increased traffic to this page in our website as one of the 10 most visited. 34,134 page views with an average time spent on page of three minutes and 20 seconds. We are creating access for hotels and attractions to be able to upload their own offers to this page. And while we're working on the details, we expect this feature will be available in May. In the meantime, we are in contact with hotels and attractions to extend booking and travel windows through December 20th and implement a family promotion or offers based on their specific venues, such as spa, golf, water sports, for example. Thank you so much for your time today. And now I leave you with Xiomara Rodriguez. Thank you, Francisco. That was uh, great information and lots of insights. Um, we have some questions on the uh, box that we'll get to in a minute. But before we get started, I want to let you know that we will not be able to offer the translation feature during the Q&A. However, next week we will send you a Q&A document with all of today's questions and their corresponding answers in English and Spanish, as well as a link to a recording to this webinar so that you can replay it at your convenience. My email, it's also on the screen. So if you have questions or need any additional information, please feel free to reach out to me via email. A nuestros amigos que están utilizando nuestro servicio de traducción, no vamos a poder ofrecer la función de subtítulos en esta sección. Sin embargo, les haremos llegar a todos las preguntas con sus correspondientes respuestas en inglés y en español junto a la grabación de este seminario web la próxima semana. Eh, además de esto, mi correo electrónico está en la pantalla. Pueden anotarlo y si tienen dudas o preguntas o necesitan algún tipo de información adicional, pueden comunicarse conmigo a través de mi correo electrónico. Vamos entonces a la sección de preguntas. Uh, Brad, I would say this question definitely is for you. Um, our guests are asking, the first uh, guests that will take advantage of local hospitality are likely to be locals. And what are the plans to engage this segment and how are we going to make them feel safer during their staycations? Is that something that the DMO is working on? So by law, the DMO is charged with promoting Puerto Rico off-island. So we are the megaphone, the microphone, and the window for the rest of the world to engage with Puerto Rico. But when the legislature in Puerto Rico created the DMO, 
they specifically designated the responsibility for local tourism promotion to the Puerto Rico Tourism Company. And you may be familiar with the Boy Turisando campaign and other activities there. So we are not charged with and really not permitted to promote locally. That is the responsibility of PRTC. And I am aware that they are certainly um, updating and planning to actively promote local tourism as every market is seeing the same trend that some people will want to stay nearby. Now, having said that, we also know the research tells us that there's a lot of people who don't want to stay home. In fact, they want a convenient, safe getaway. So we'll be focused on trying to restart the tourism engine off island while PRTC does their job in promoting locally. And one good thing for all of the businesses that are listed on our website and our materials is while our charge is promoting off island, we have a lot of local followers. So anytime we're sharing information, we know we're reaching the local audiences. But when it comes to the active promotional plans, we're gonna stick with the mission that we were given and work within the scope of the law. And that is promoting Puerto Rico to the outside world. Thank you, Brad. Um, this question is for Ed. When do you expect uh, MIFE and what can we do to ensure groups are feeling safe in this destination? You know, we, um, uh, we actually sent a survey out to a number of our hoteliers over the past couple of days, and we were asking when you expect your first groups to operate. And, and two things came out of that. You still expect to operate groups as early as June of this coming year. Now, whether that's social groups or, or some form of corporate group, we don't know. But the thing that's going to be most important is to pay attention, as I said, and many of us said before, to those protocols. You need to have clear protocols, in, in, in our opinion, outlined as to not only how you're going to uh, take care of, of, of house cleaning and public areas, but how you're going to social distance on the beach, for instance, and in, in, in meeting room space. And that goes through the entire delivery of the food and beverage options and the meetings themselves. So the best thing we can do to be ready for MICE customers is to have those protocols outlined. And at, from the surveys that we've already gotten back, it looks like we are all in process of making that happen, but uh, a, a good portion of us are still kind of struggling with how to put that in a format that we can articulate to the, uh, to the, the MICE planner. So uh, we're making progress, but that's still probably the biggest hurdle we have to overcome. Thank you, Ed. Uh, Leah, this question's for you. Are you planning on doing innovations within the virtual vacate initiative? Can you hear us, Leah? No, you're breaking up a little bit. I'm trying to find the question. Okay, are you planning on doing more action with the virtual vacay initiative in Spanish? Ah, um, it's a great question. We are not at this time, we are continuing the virtual vacation activations through May right now. Um, the level of interest from local partners to participate and be featured in those has been really, really strong. Um, and the level of participation from consumers is also strong. So we're definitely continuing the activations. But as Brad just mentioned, uh, per our charge in the legislation that created the DMO, our main focus is promoting off the island and what we know about the US consumers who are receiving our message, they're about 96% English speaking. So the majority of all of our communication um, that's coming out of the DMO for consumers is going to be in English. Thank you. Um, one of the attendees is asking how they can better align themselves uh, with Discover Puerto Rico, and in particular with the, um, with the CAP plan in release to COVID-19, they currently have a project that relates to ecotourism that would like to align themselves with the DMO. Sure. Well, I'll be happy to uh, talk from my thoughts there. Raymond, um, first and foremost, what I would recommend is take a look at the plan. Uh, it's on our website, uh, PuertoRicoDMO.com, and it's there in English, and I believe by the end of the day, we'll actually have the Spanish translated version there. It'll give you a framework so you can see how we're approaching that. 
uh, you're also welcome to uh, get from our same website a copy of today's presentation. So that's the first thing. And when you look at that, look at it from the eyes of your business and how you could apply what we're doing to your business. The second thing is I encourage everyone take full advantage of the research that we have. We are very, very blessed at Discover Puerto Rico to have one of, if not the best destination marketing research analyst in the entire industry and Alicia Valentine. And what you heard from Alicia today and last week in the webinar is cutting edge information, not only that she's been able to acquire, but her colleagues and expert resources throughout the industry. So we have a wealth of information that we just don't have time to share with you today. And some of those might be interesting, particularly for those of you in water sports or restaurants or uh, the independent rental market where we can provide you unique insights that can help your business. The third, make sure you're taking full advantage of the industry's best website, discoverpuertorico.com. And I can say that without bragging because that came from the US Travel Association that ranked discoverpuertorico.com, the best website of all states and territories in the US. If your business isn't actively listed and you don't have upgraded photos and information, then you may be losing opportunities when we begin to, to restart the tourism economy. At the same time, you should certainly make sure that you're signed up for all of our communications, the research, the newsletters, and other information. And many of you may not realize, but we have an extraordinarily talented media communications and media relations uh, division that push out information to media off-island led by Shiamata. We also have a very talented team that develop uh, creative resources led by JP Polo. And a lot of those resources that JP and his team develop are available to you free of charge for use on your websites and tools. And Shiamara is a link to you and the outside media world to carry unique stories and updates on what's happening in your business. A few other things you can do, make sure you're active on all of our social channels, which are continuously growing and courtesy of these virtual vacations, we've been able to expand our reach and engagement. In fact, we have one of the best social media teams in the DMO world, and they've done some extraordinary work. So take advantage of that, whether it's retweeting, reposting, or engaging with us. And then a couple other things you can do. We have a director of engagement, Karen Mojica, who is there for you. Her job is to help you liaise with us. So reach out to Karen. It's Karen Mojica at Discover Puerto Rico, Karen Mojica at discoverpuertorico.com or just email info at discoverpuertorico.com and they'll be happy to connect you with Karen. And Raymond, one other thing, my family and I had planned to, to come to Vieques and Culebra last month. So I've got to promise my wife and daughter to return. We want to be three of the first visitors to help open Vieques and Culebra. So when I come, I'd love to meet with you and see what you're doing in ecotourism. Thank you, Brad. Um, Leah, this is for you as well. Um, you mentioned golf during your presentation, but we're getting asked if um, we are planning on reactivating strategies on niche markets, like for example, LGBTQ. Yes, absolutely. Um, golf, LGBTQ, uh, culinary tourism, and luxury are just a few of the focuses that we have had prior to COVID-19 in terms of niche markets, and all of those will be reactivated. Certainly, um, markets like luxury and LGBTQ are going to be heavier focuses because we know um, what we're hearing in research is that luxury is one of the segments that's going to be soonest to come back because the folks who are traveling uh, from a luxury standpoint are going to be less hard hit from an economic standpoint than some of our other travelers. And historically, the LGBTQ segment has been a, a segment known post-disaster to be one of the first groups to come back into destinations. So we're counting on our friends in the LGBTQ space to be, uh, to be a very active part in our recovery. In fact, we're working with our consultants at Hospitable Me right now in the LGBTQ space to do a specific outreach to LGBTQ plus influencers um, to help let them know that Puerto Rico is going to be ready when they're ready and to share some of our current marketing messaging with them. So certainly the niche markets uh, will be picked up very quickly. And as we mentioned earlier with golf being an open air sport and an activity that people can uh, enjoy those wide open spaces and fresh air, we know that it's going to be uh, one of our first niche markets uh, that we bring back as well. Now, uh, with the new normal, the question is, what are the plans to promote independent rentals as we move forward after the pandemic? 
So the independent rentals have been a part of our marketing approach um, kind of since their inception on the island. And I would say um, different from many other destinations because lodging tax is collected on those independent rentals. We have marketed them more robustly um, than maybe some other destinations who don't receive lodging tax from the independent rentals or the short-term rentals. So we continue to pick back up um, where we left off once we get back into uh, whatever we're calling kind of normal marketing um, post COVID-19. And certainly they will be a, a part of the plan. I think many people have already seen some of the uh, specific content that we've developed around independent rentals. And we'll continue to, to look at ways to integrate that unique content. I think, um, you know, there are different schools of thought around which type of lodging is going to be more appealing to, uh, to the consumers when they, they come back. And I think there are benefits and advantages um, to both. So we want to, to definitely amplify those as we learn more about all of the cleanliness and health standards um, around both uh, traditional lodging like hotels and also our independent rentals. Um, Brett, you mentioned uh, previously about the different assets that the DMO has available for uh, businesses in the industry. We're getting a question, if you could please expand as to the type of um, assets they can have access to and how do they do that? Well, um, you know, I, I've, I've learned a, a very good lesson here in Puerto Rico that uh, you don't try to answer a question, you, you aren't the best to answer. We have uh, the best chief marketing officer in the industry. So I'm going to shift this over to Leah, other than just simply to say this, when we opened, uh, we recognized that we are your DMO. So when we develop research, we develop creative assets, uh, when we're able to create new platforms for promotion, uh, it's not the DMO doing it for the DMO, it's the DMO doing it for you. So every time we pursue any marketing or sales technique, we're looking at how we can extend that and this is a great uh, opportunity that, frankly, very, very few destinations have. Uh, we have one of the best multimedia teams in the industry, and they're doing some great work. And I'll let Leah Chandler tell you what they've been able to amass and how you can take advantage of it. Absolutely. Um, as Brad mentioned, we do have a very, very, very robust um, internal asset database. Um, we have over 4,000 images and hours and hours of footage that is unrestricted in terms of rights and usage, meaning it's wholly 100% owned by the DMO and it is open for use for our partners. So you do not have to have any specific licensing to be able to use that footage or those images. They're very high quality. The majority of uh, all of our assets have been shot by um, local content creators. We have worked with about 27 content creators around the island to help us gather our video and still assets. And our team would be more than happy to make sure that you are um, in touch with how to access those. We use a digital asset management program called Photo Shelter and we can get you um, unique access for you and your business to get in and um, also give you a brief tutorial on how to use those. So the best way to connect with us is um, to email Ciamara, whose email is currently up on the slide, and she will connect you with um, JP and his team with our in-house multimedia group. Thank you, Leah. Uh, Francisco, this question, it's for you. Um, after the earthquakes, the DMO launched a landing page that featured different hotel specials. And uh, our audience wants to know if there are any plans to do that once again after the pandemic gets under control. Well, we do have the uh, page uh, up and available. And if you have not uh, been in contact with us, please do so, send us an email. Uh, you can actually send it to Xiomara, whose email is, is available right now, and we will be happy to put the offer up. Um, please make sure to follow the guidelines, but we definitely will, will take a look at it. As I mentioned during the presentation, we're working on a feature that will allow the hotels to upload their own offers as well and manage them. And we invite you, if you're not yet, to be a part of uh, the companies that have signed up for our website and um, we're, we're happy to help you with that. Thank you, Francisco. We have a few more minutes. 
But um, this question, Leah, would be for you and anyone else on the panel that would like to, um, to add. Uh, do you have any recommendations that um, we can offer the industry today that they can be doing so they can remain top of mind and enter the consideration set of future travelers? So I think one of the most important things you can do right now is contact uh, the DMO. If you've got an idea or you have an opportunity within your business that you think would be a good fit for the types of activations we've shared with you today, please reach out to us. I would say 50% of the activations that we have done so far, especially related to our virtual vacations, have come from industry members reaching out to us and saying, hey, we can do a live yoga, se yoga session on our beach in front of our hotel. That's awesome. We, we'd love to know about that. So um, I think the most important thing to do is just stay top of mind with us and then we will figure out um, the best way or future opportunities that are going to be available in order to engage um, your business. Don't forget about the customers who you already have in your database um, and your CRM systems. No matter how sophisticated or unsophisticated they are, um, I'm sure every business has a list of people who have stayed with them before or have bought tickets to their attraction. Make sure you're utilizing that group of people who you know are already loyal customers or have already been uh, in, in touch with your business in some way and reach back out to them. Um, same with your social media channels. As we've mentioned in today's presentation, not everybody is ready to book today, but people are definitely thinking about travel and they're saying, we are going to be traveling in the next six months. We're going to be traveling in the next eight months and we want to be ready for them. And the best way to stay in touch with them today, either through us with the efforts we're doing or through your own um, channels that you have in place, don't be afraid to step back, to step back into that marketing role. And it doesn't have to be with a sales message or a booking message today. It can simply be to remind consumers um, that you're here and try to meet them in the place they are. Thank you, Leah. Uh, Francisco, are there any plans to continue the educational program for travel advisors? Of course, the, the program for education for travel advisors is up and running. Um, we are just waiting for the numbers uh, for the whole month of April, which, which will come up next week, uh, to, to review the, the amount of incentives that we will actually be paying to all those wonderful travel agents that took the course and uh, we're very likely to reinstate the offer. So yes, it's always up and, and running and I invite everyone, whether you are or you're not a travel agent to take the course. It's, it's an amazing course, uh, very informative, uh, very easy to, to take uh, and uh, I mean, really well done. Please do. Thank you. Uh, Leah, this question's for you. Uh, as part of the marketing strategy, do you plan to promote the island to the Hispanic market or uh, diaspora living in the mainland? Absolutely. Um, that was part of our plan before COVID, and we were actually just gearing up um, to do some, some pretty significant activations with the diaspora. It's certainly going to be part of our plan post COVID-19, but we have to rethink it in several ways. Um, it's important to note, obviously, that some of our largest diaspora markets are also some of the hardest hit markets by COVID-19. Um, we can't ignore what's happening in New York. We can't ignore what's happening in Florida. Chicago has been significantly, uh, significantly hit. Uh, so we've got to make sure that those markets like New York and Florida, where we've been doing a lot of outreach to diaspora in the past, we're coming in with the right message at the right time, and it may be more of a VFR type of message. Um, maybe people haven't been able to get into the island, um, or they feel like because of restrictions that are in place right now, it's not the best time to visit. But as soon as those restrictions begin to lift, they're going to want to come and connect with their friends and family again. So we're definitely going to reach out to them, but it's an area that we have to be really, really thoughtful and intentional about. Um, some of the plans that would have worked before COVID-19 are not going to work today. Perfect. We've got time for two more questions. So uh, I'll open this up to anyone on the panel. Do you have any um, recommendations or best practices for people that are in the water sports industry? How can they, um, respecting the social distancing, be opening their business and taking care of their clients? 
Yeah, so uh, great question. And let, let us try if we can, we'll take a, a general approach to that that I think is applicable to every business on here. Um, as we all know, things are gonna change. Consumer expectations are gonna change. Business protocols are gonna change. We all have to be respective and uh, responsive and to, to this new normal, but also respective of all of the consumer expectations that are now going to elevate. Uh, if you've ever seen the movie Jerry Maguire, let me paraphrase it this way, show me the safety and cleanliness. And that's what the consumer is going to expect. So here's a few things that we can do to help you, or at least to offer some guidance. First and foremost, uh, early next week, we expect that the U.S. Travel Association will be releasing a broad uh, spectrum of guidelines and uh, prospective protocols that most any business dealing with consumers can apply. These will be general and most will be voluntary, although some may be required by local government. But the importance of this is they're going to set a standard that will be endorsed by more national trade associations than any other organization. So it's going to help reassure consumers to begin traveling when we're on the right side of the COVID pandemic. And that will be the expectation for the U.S. visitors coming to our island. You also have some great resources locally. PRHTA has already published some local guidelines, and I understand the tourism company will soon be publishing a list of guidelines and a special program to endorse businesses that are reaching or exceeding the required standards. Now, while that might not be specific to water sports, I would use this for any business as a way to develop your plans. And so we give you a little bit of guidance today. Let me offer a few uh, specifics from the U.S. travel plan that I think might be helpful to any business. First and foremost, Look at your business and everywhere your consumers go and look at the touch points. What are they touching? And one of the things that we want to strive for is reduced touch points. The fewer times that people are touching common areas, the more you'll be able to limit uh, the spread of disease. Now, you can't limit every touch point. Uh, you can't eliminate all of them, but you can certainly start to evaluate that. Secondly, evaluate spaces of congestion. You know your business better than anybody. Where do people typically congregate? We're gonna to need to think differently about staging and queuing people. So look at where people congregate and see what you might be able to do to create not so much social distancing, but physical distancing, obviously respective to your business model. Third, and this goes without saying, we all have to really evaluate the practices in our businesses for hygiene and cleanliness. And this is as much an organizational responsibility as a personal responsibility. So teaching and training employees how to spot problems and how to anticipate uh, challenges, as well as informing consumers what we're doing. And along those lines, one of the things I think we have to be able to do is visually show consumers that we're cleaning. You know, a lot of times in businesses like airports and hotels, we like to do the cleaning when nobody's around so it doesn't interfere. It doesn't always uh, create the most uh, luxurious uh, experience or the most uh, scenic visuals. But I think now a lot of us are going to feel good about seeing those staff who are cleaning and preparing the businesses. So certainly think through your cleaning practices and how you handle that both before during and after operating hours. A few other things to think about, enhancing sanitation, creating transmission barriers where there's areas that you just can't close off, but you know they could potentially transmit diseases. How do you create a bit of a barrier perhaps to at least impede that? And something I think we all are gonna have to think about is testing and health screening for our employees. Now, some of these would be voluntary opportunities for businesses to enhance their operation. Some of these may be required by regulatory agencies, but all of these are a good starting point to be thinking about this business practice in a new environment, an environment where safety and security means much, much more than what it did a few weeks ago. It now means protecting everyone at that cross section of public health and travel and tourism. Thank you, Brad. Um, we'll address our last question. Uh, Ed, this uh, will be something for you. Those meetings that um, are scheduled to happen in 2021 or 2022 that were originally scheduled for 2020, um, mm -hmm. as they're trying to find space to reaccommodate these meetings uh, in the US, but are not necessarily finding that or having challenges, have we thought about reaching out to those groups and offer Puerto Rico as a possibility? Absolutely, and, and I'm so glad so, uh, 
I think it's Edgar asked that. Thank you for asking that question, Edgar, because I think you've, you've um, hit upon a really key opportunity for us. We, uh, we're not only looking at our lost business, uh, any piece that was lost to other destinations in the US, but we're carefully looking at those uh, pieces of business that were lost to international destinations like uh, Mexico, uh, Jamaica, Aruba, um, the Bahamas, uh, and, and others. Because if you have been listening in on some of the webinars that we've been doing the last several weeks, we're talking about one of the key value propositions being that we're a U.S. territory. And what that means, and we've come right out and told people, that if you are in Puerto Rico, the medical professionals and the hospitals all must adhere to the same sta federally mandated standards that you have to adhere to anywhere in the U.S. So we think that is going to be a key way for us to give a, a level of comfort to those meeting planners that are very concerned about those those uh, health and, and, and safety protocols. So yeah, that is a, a, a really key message. And, and we are uh, now, uh, day in and day out, looking at every piece of business that was lost, not only domestically, but internationally. The, the, the one thing that, that, um, that concerns us a bit is the fact that uh, you know, we inherited a incentive fund from uh, Meet Puerto Rico, and it was, uh, it was uh, you know, only 20% of what we, or 25% of what we feel we need to really move the needle on the group side. And we're still waiting for those funds to be released to us. So all of us need to, to together to push to have those funds released because I can tell you that every destination out there is going to be hungry for the business and they're going to be throwing everything they can at, can at it. And so with these uh, intrinsic value propositions that we already have as a U.S. Uh, a, a U.S. affiliated destination. If we don't have those funds to compete, then we are squandering what could be a great opportunity. And I'm sorry to get fired up about this, but thanks for asking that question. Thank you, Ed. And thank you everyone for joining us today. Uh, please be on the lookout for additional communications from your DMO in regards to additional webinars and more information about our programs and activations. We'll see you the next time.